whether you are here in church or watching online, it's lovely to have you here to worship God together. We've got some notices to begin with. First of all, last week was Christian Aid Week. If you didn't get the chance to give and would like to, there are some Christian Aid envelopes at the back of church. Please do help yourself. And who should they give them to? Should, should they post them or should they give them to you, Ruth? Give them, give them to Ruth. Ruth or to the office, that would be brilliant. We have a number of requests for help. Uh, so I'm not going to read them all out to you, but we need help for, uh, with cakes for the confirmation on Thursday. And we need help with a baptism tea we're doing on next Sunday afternoon. So if you can help in the kitchen or provide sandwiches for uh, the baptism tea, please see Erin. She'll have a list and she'll be at the back of church waiting to talk to you as you leave church. Next Saturday is a big day in the church's life because it's a parish consultation. We don't have these often, uh, but it's a chance for everyone in the church to say what they think is important for our church moving forward and what we should be looking for in a new vicar. Uh, the morning, it begins at 10 o'clock in the church centre, goes on till 12.30. It's going to be led by someone called Mark Mellowish from the diocese. He's very good indeed. He'll be stimulating. He'll help you to think through uh, things. So please do come along if you're able to. And please pray uh, for that consultation. Uh, we particularly ask that people try and find time on the Friday for prayer and perhaps fasting. Perhaps if you're meeting with other Christians this week in home groups, please do pray for next Saturday. And also in your prayers this week, please be remembering those who are going to be confirmed on Thursday evening. Remember them in prayer and come and support them on Thursday evening in church here at 7.30. Being confirmed are Izzy, Summer, Lila, Steve and Margaret. So please do come and support these members of our church family. And I think that's all the notices. Lovely. Well, after all the notices, it's important to remind ourselves again. We have come to worship God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come to acknowledge his power and authority, to give thanks for his care and keeping and to offer ourselves in his service. He is creator of the world. He, he gives us life and breath. He is preserver of all life. He, he sustains us day, day by day. day. He is redeemer of his people. He, he shows, shows us his love in Christ. He is Lord of lords. He, he controls all things. O oh Lord our God. God. We bring you our love and praise and give you thanks for all your goodness. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our first hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Would you please stand?
Please do take a seat. It's great to remind ourselves in that song of the constancy of our Lord. He is the faithful one. We can always trust in him. And that's why we can trust this saying. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Whereas Jesus is the constant one, we're often all over the place. So let's turn to God and find forgiveness. For we have sinned against him and do not deserve to be called his children. Merciful Father, we confess to you the wrong things we have done. Forgive us, Lord. We confess to you the wrong things we have said. Forgive us, Lord, for we are sorry. We confess to you the wrong things we have thought. Forgive us, Lord, for we are sorry. And we confess to you the things we failed to do, failed to say, and failed to think. Forgive us, Lord, for we are sorry. Amen. May the Almighty and all-loving Father forgive us for the sins we have now confessed to him and help us to serve him better in the days to come. Amen. One of the great joys in church life is when new members join us and We've been blessed over recent months with a number of new people coming to our church and we're going to welcome them. So if they would like to come up to the front now, the people that I've spoken to, just in case you're wondering, is this for me or not? The people who I've invited to know who they are and they're coming, which is wonderful because it's, it's always embarrassing if I have to drag them. <laughs> we're just clearing the dead bodies from the eye. <laughs> Sorry, those of you who are watching online, there aren't really dead ones. That's great. Well done. Well done. You come and stand around here somewhere, but don't go far away. very encouraging I'm going to be coming down am I to to for, for Paul and Georgina and Joyce so it's going to be move around slightly chaotic so here we go so we've got now got our family so Bex and this is Florence and David and Elizabeth I welcome you as members of Holy Church in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Andrew, I welcome you as a member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you as a member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lisa and Denise, I welcome you as members of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keith, Angela. I welcome you as members of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I do. I welcome you as member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rachel, Dan, and Edith, I welcome you as members of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Paul, I welcome you as a member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Regina, I welcome you as a member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Joyce, I welcome you as a member of Holy Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. So I'm sorry to have a microphone for, for all those names. I'll, I'll just 
Because you've got to learn all these names. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. So it's Bex, Florence, David, Elizabeth, Andrew, Wynne, and then going from the back, Lisa, Philippe, Heath, Angela, Irene, Edith, Rachel, Dan, Paul, and Georgina, and Joyce. So, existing members of the church, would you please stand? And we join in saying, we welcome you as fellow members of this church. May God help us to support you and pray for you. And then we're all going to join in with these words, which talk about our aims together as a church. Almighty God, renew our resolve to grow in faith through worship, prayer, and Bible reading. Deepen our fellowship together and help us in our frontline engagement so that all of our lives may be lived for your glory. We ask this in the name of him who calls us to be his disciples. Amen. Can we get them all around? Thank you. Let's see. Um, while I think on my feet, uh, we have these little A5 leaflets that we uh, produce for each of the five aims. So whether it be worship, prayer, Bible reading, frontline engagement, fellowship, there are some little seats on the table at the back of the church. Please help yourself to them if you haven't had one before. They've not been updated recently, so you may already have these. We're going to pray for our Sunday clubs as they're already disappearing fast out of the door. Let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we pray for our children and young people that you would bless them this day. May their time together be a special time of knowing more about your amazing love for them. Amen. And a special prayer for today. God of glory, touch our lips with the fire of your spirit, that with all creation we may rejoice to sing your praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to uh, stand and sing. We've got three songs together that Chris has put together for us. Well, when I saw Edith come up, I thought I had another band member with the guitar. Did you see good to praise God. Amen? Amen? So feel comfortable in these little choruses, you kind of sit or stand where you want to. Let, let's, let's, let's praise God together in these simple choruses.
John chapter 5 beginning 
gave them this answer. I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees the Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than these. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth that a time is coming, and his now and has now come. When the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as <coughs> for us the Father has life himself, so he has granted the Son to have life himself. And he has given authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for the time is coming for all who are in the <coughs> will hear this voice, his voice, and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. And speak to God. Peter is going to be preaching to us this morning, so Peter, if you'd like to come up. Peter and Mary joined our church, well, they were in the last lot of welcome we did before this one, and Peter and Mary have both been very much involved in the church in New Zealand, doing various things involving leading services and preaching, so it's a great pleasure to have Peter preaching today, and soon we're having uh, Mary preaching. So, sorry about the sound over the system, you have to understand have to imagine Peter preaching by the, the, the seashore or something like that. <laughs> I was just going to say, I, sh I should change the title of, of, of my talk from the breath of God to uh, rivers of living water. <laughs> <laughs> and I have control. I've always worried about this. <laughs> Not in charge. Um, okay. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. And Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As uh, Stephen has just mentioned, uh, we before we lived in Hereford, we lived in, in New Zealand. And Mary and I had the opportunity to visit many areas and countries that are not quite uh, it's so easy to visit from the UK. One of those countries was China. While we visited the, uh, the city of Xi'an, it's about X-I-A-N, um, where shortly after the time of Ezekiel, uh, the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, uh, built his own army to protect him in the afterlife. This army we know as the Terracotta Army, and consists of 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, 420 horses, uh, 150 cavalry uh, horses. Each piece is life size and individually made. We weren't mold made. And are formed up in ranks, ready uh, to defend the emperor. Emperor um, Jin Shan Wang, a, buried, um, a burial site, is built like a city with walls around a hill and reportedly took. 700,000 conscripted workers to build and reportedly consists of palaces, towers, uh, office, um, uh, offices, um, valuable artifacts, and uh, wondrous objects. According to the account, 100 flowing rivers were simulated using mercury, and above them, uh, the ceiling was decorated with heavenly bodies below, which lay in the features of land. Under Chinese tradition, 
it is taboo to enter the emperor's burial site. Uh, so even today, inside the city walls have not been explored. The terracotta army itself was buried in a series of trenches outside the walls, so that we you know uh, so that it could defend the city if attacked. These trenches uh, were then covered with tree trunks and earth, which over time rotted and collapsed. These tunnels were then forgotten about until about 50 years ago when they were rediscovered. As they lay outside the walls of the tomb, it was possible to excavate uh, the remains of the army. So just as this army um, uh, was lay buried in, in ruins, this morning we have heard about Ezekiel's vision of a valley filled with dry bones and it has a uh, theme of life out of death. So who was Ezekiel? He was a Jewish prophet who is venerated not just in the, by the Jewish faith, but also interestingly enough by the Christian faith, Muslim faith, and by half faiths. He lived between 622 and 570 BCE. Uh, when this king, uh, Jeconiah of Israel, was defeated by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, the Israelites were taken into exile into, into Babylon, into what uh, today is called Iraq. It was from Iraq that Ezekiel had his ministry. While there, Ezekiel will have seen Jerusalem being destroyed. Today's passage recounts a prophecy where Ezekiel is taken to a valley in which he sees the skeletal remains of a fallen army that was slain long ago and never buried. In the prophecy, this army represents the people of Israel after the fall of Israel, of, of Jerusalem. What he sees is a God reforming the bones into bodies and then breathing life back into them. This becomes a source of great hope for the Israelites as he depicts the resurrection of the bones as a revival of God's people. This passage looks forward to a day when God will gather the remnants of his people and return them to Israel again. And the whole world will see the miraculous hand of God. Before we can understand the events of this passage and their symbolism, we have to understand how burials were undertaken in ancient Israel, as well as how the people ex uh, expected the resurrection of the dead to take place. When, when someone died, their bodies were placed in one of several chambers um, that lined the walls of a large family tomb, which was typically cut out of rock. The tomb was then sealed until another um, family member died. When the family re-entered the tomb, they would find that the body had decayed and, a, um, and the only part that left was the skeleton. The skeleton was then taken from the chamber and placed in a common bone coffin in the middle of the tomb. <coughs> this common coffin, uh, called an um, ossuary, contained the bones of many family fam uh, members. The bones were often mixed up with those from other members of the family. The purpose of the ossuary was uh, to group everybody in, in the family together as they were awaiting resurrection. The resurrection, they thought, would take place in reverse order of the decay of the body. Instead of beginning with a full uh, body of flesh and ending with bones, the resurrection would begin with bones and, and end with a full body of flesh. But a little bit like our, our lesson today, Emperor uh, Qin Shu Huang thought that um, as he was the all-powerful emperor of China, he had the power to breathe life into his army to defend his tomb with all its worldly uh, possessions piled up around him. Just like the pharaohs of Egypt. However, there is a big, big difference between what we believe and what the emperor of China believed. This is highlighted by our New Testament uh, lesson, where we are told that God is the only one who can bring genuine life. Ezekiel's skeletons uh, will not come uh, alive 
until the car places its own breath in them. The appearance is there. The promise of life is there. But life does not come until God himself breathes his own life into the slain. Without God breathing uh, life into the bones, they uh, would suffer the same fate as the terracotta army. Where they stood lifeless in their tunnels until the uh, wooded roof rotted away and the army was buried and forgotten deep in the ground. For us, God accomplished his plan through, Jesus, through his son, Jesus Christ. Christ came to pay for, uh, for human sin by giving up his own life and then rising from the dead. God's Spirit came to breathe new life into us, guiding us to know, uh, to know the Lord and trust Him, forgiveness and salvation. Spiritual awakening is something that all Christians want to see uh, take place in our own neighbourhoods and also throughout the world. For those who have no hope, or who are dead in their sin, their spiritual life can come back to life because of the power of Jesus is our Jesus. God's breath can give them new life. We can all be reborn because of Christ. We have heard how life only comes through God's breath, by the Holy Spirit. Later on in the service, we'll be singing uh, the hymn, Breathe On Me, Breath of God. So when we sing this hymn, can I suggest that we prayerfully ask God through his Holy Spirit to fill us with his, uh, his life and you. At the end of the week, we have our parish consultation, which is, start, which is the start of an important phase in the future of our church here in this benefice. As has been mentioned, on, on Saturday, we have, um, sorry, um, on, on Friday, we are having a day of prayer for guidance and discernment from God that will uh, help and lead us through the, uh, the journey. Can I please encourage each of us to set aside a time on, on Friday for this, whether it be eight minutes or eight hours, or somewhere in between. It is important for the future of our parish that we do this. chance to sing this hymn and as Peter's reminded us it's so important not just to sing out words but to really mean them. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew.
So as we stand, let's declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, son of the unconscious child, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would you please sit for our prayers of intercession? man-made 
and we just want to follow your way, Lord. Your way, the truth, and the life. And so in all these thoughts and prayers, Lord, let's gather them together in the words that you gave us to speak in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. stand and sing King of Kings. Thank you.